Well, what's going on LFA TV? It's a beautiful day out and it's perfect to work on the car, right? So, um, it should be an eventful day. If you guys remember a while back, I had bought a whole set of polyurethane uh, bushings for the front suspension, like my front upper and lower control arms. And uh, I had also bought brand new inner and outer tie rods and they had been sitting for a while now. So it's a perfect day to get to work on the front suspension. After all, um, it rides a, real, a little rough when it hits bumps. So hopefully all these go on perfectly fine. Um, I'm gonna start off by jacking up the car and making, it making sure it's secure. All right guys, so I'm gonna start with the passenger side. And uh, if you guys remember, this is the side that took the hit when I, uh, you know, unfortunately broke the wheel. But um, like I said, at first glance, it doesn't seem like anything's broken, but, um, or a bent, I mean. So I'm gonna start off by removing the tie rods. I gotta remove the upper control arms as those bushings are gonna be changed out as well. Um, but yeah, let's start doing this. Just so you guys could have an idea how bad these bushings are, check this out. <laughs> Those bushings are gone. Yeah, it was probably a really bad idea driving it like that to Vegas, but uh, thank God nothing happened. <laughs> oh my God. I remember guys this process doesn't take too long it's just I'm trying to record for you guys so it might take longer for me but uh yeah once you lift up the the little plastic on the wheel well you should have all the axes you need to be able to pull this bolt out and uh yeah it's just a matter of that the first bushings that we're gonna change are the ones for the upper control arm so yeah uh I always like to do this just uh, so you guys don't lose any bolts. I like to keep things organized. Some people are way faster and, and you know, just put things down. Um, but yeah. Move this thing back in place. Just set it there. Your upper control arm is off from the top. Now the only thing we gotta do is basically remove the ball joint from the uh, what's a freaking spindle, whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. But in this case, for the Supras, they don't have a little hole in here for any Allen wrenches or anything like that. So one quick tip, you know, that I learned from, you know, online and other stuff like that. Mr. Gallardo or, you know, anybody who has ever gave me tips. Um, just grab a jack, jack up the car or this side of the car so what that does is it creates pressure on the knuckle here so the knuckle is kind of stuck with the ball joint so when you go ahead and loosen up the nut you'll be able to loosen it up or tighten it whichever one uh, vice versa but yeah with your bushing kit you're gonna get your um your little guide of which bushing goes where and stuff like that so um yeah i'm just gonna take them take off the other one on the other side and take them to a machine shop and get the upper ones done all right so um same thing went with i could show you guys same thing went with this bottom knuckle for the lower control arm once again you got to provide some pressure uh, at any angle just to prevent from the bolt from spinning and then you're able to remove the nut. Um, after that it's just pretty much um, removing the lower control arm bolts to remove the lower control arm. You're going to have to remove the coilover um, or the shock bolts right here to be able to remove that and then you're going to have to remove this little arm right here for the freaking brace and uh, as far as that that should be it and uh once again you have to make sure everything doesn't hang like by its own weight be able to hang stuff like that because then 
you gotta remember that these lines are pretty old and uh, you don't want nothing breaking. All right, fellas, so I was able to get everything off, but um, not, it doesn't seem to be bent or anything like that. Like I said, uh, these bushings are gone, completely gone, as you guys can see. Um, but yeah, it's just a mess in there. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Um, I'm still gonna get them, uh, take them to the machine shop just, to, just so they could properly clean them out and uh, put my bushings in. Go ahead and repeat the process on the other side. Sorry, whoa, whoa, chill, chill. I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side and get both upper and lower control arms off and go ahead and take them to a machine shop and you know, pay a few extra bucks and get rid of the headache to putting those things on. So yeah, basically do the same to this side and uh, yeah, go from there guys. I'm not really gonna record the other side cause it's the same as this side. Well, as you guys can see, it's nighttime, and as always, when you're working on a Supra, there's something that always has to go wrong, right? When something's going smooth, you gotta expect something to go wrong, and this is exactly what went wrong. What happened was that this bottom bolt for the lower control arm was just so old and rusted onto the pin. As you guys know, the pin, uh, the bushings have some pins in the middle, and um, Basically the bolt was just infused or welded onto the pin so it would not come out It would not come out From the bracket, so uh, that's gonna need some hammering in the morning to be able to get fixed and um, This bolt is basically bad We use the torch we use the chisel we use the a sledgehammer and it just wasn't coming out my lower control arms and my upper control arms are at the machine shop right now they're pressing in the bushings um, so something that I'm gonna do on the meantime is pretty much change my uh, inner and outer tie rods uh, since I can no longer use the driver's side caster bolt uh, I did go to Toyota and I got a brand new caster bolt that um, pretty much costs an arm and a leg but well I had to you might want to leave your outer tie rod connected to your old inner tie rod that way you have kind of like an idea of how long uh, your new ones got to be that way your alignment is isn't too far off all right fellas so as you guys could see I finally got my control arms back from the machine shop got all brand new bushings as you guys could see uh, i'm also going to be replacing the ball joints um one thing that's good about these lower control arms for the mark 3 supers is that these ball joints come out and they're just from these two bolts uh these three bolts this one this one and this one which is kind of good because on my sc 400 um I wasn't able to change these out. I left the lower control arms as they were. So these lower ball joints, uh, they don't come greased up or anything like that. So what they do come with is this little nipple. Uh, just basically put it on the bottom, tighten it up. And whenever you're getting ready to take it to alignment or you know before you actually drive the car, um, just go ahead and add some little grease. This is my new passenger inner tie rod. If you guys notice, this end right here has a bracket and that's because my Supra is an 87. And the uh, pre-88 models, the pre-88 models have this dampener right here. You guys see this? The pre-88 models have this dampener here that connects to the rack and pinion and uh, this arm right here connects to that bracket. So um, that's why that inner tie rod is right there. But if you guys are, you know, after 87, you guys will not have that and do not have to worry about that. All right, fellas, we got this side done. As you can see, this is the side that was pretty beat up. 
but we managed to kind of force everything back to its original position uh, brand new inner and outer tie rods new upper bushings brand new calipers I promise I promise that's not spray paint uh, yeah that's spray paint I'm gonna be I'm gonna be upgrading those later on in the very very near future because they're bad already so just for now touch a little paint you know what I'm saying just to make it look fresh all right guys so one of the last parts to this would basically be um, just to remember to grease up your lower uh, your lower ball joints because remember the the brand new the brand new knuckles here uh, do not come looped up but yeah um another thing that I really want to talk about is I don't know if you guys could see this darker part right here um, but if you guys remember these are my two hundred and forty dollar eBay uh, coilovers and I'll put the link up in the description as always um, but if you guys want to check the opening unboxing of those and talk about those um, I a lot of guys have asked me you know how do these hold up how are they how are they riding this and that and I said right off the bat that these are very soft out of, out of the box they are very soft the front of the car was really bouncy so every time I would drive it would go like that you know kind of soft but since I did all the suspension work I added about two inches of compression on my spring rate um, it it sounds like I know what I'm talking about but I really don't all I know is that I added I tightened I tightened up the spring rate um, so in theory it was gonna make the spring a bit stiffer and yes the ride actually it, it works and um, these coilovers actually ride way way better they're not really soft in the front no more so that extra compression on the spring rate in the front uh, it rides very nice actually so I'm very surprised with these uh, coilovers now and uh, on top of that all new brand new suspension it rides really good and I took it around the block that's how I know but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and lube these up and adjust the height and we'll be done as far as that goes so if you guys want to see kind of how this is done I wasn't gonna record it but you know maybe someone would like to know this is basically like a press on uh, thing on my bobber got the nipple here and then uh, you push it on top you force it on there and you'll feel it it kind of snaps on there you go so just gonna give it a a few pumps you know what I'm saying like if you're hitting the gym you know what I'm saying and then uh, get like a quick eight pumps in there and put her back on but yeah that's basically it all right guys so that's pretty much it for all my brand new suspension I uh, hope you guys liked it I hope they could help it helped you guys in some type of way right I want to talk to you guys about something else because I had a I have something to show you guys as you guys know it's technically uh, getting closer to winter and us out here on the west coast uh, winter means boo season right the coldest it gets out here is probably in the 40s uh, as you guys know one of my main goals for this car is to go standalone uh, with ECU master and uh, for those of you for those of you that know the full plug-and-play uh, standalone from ECU master for the 7M GTE runs about twelve hundred dollars which is quite a bit and um you know I don't want to let this boost season go along without me making some decent power so I bought this so what we got here is some uh, 650 cc injectors from AUS injection here locally in Arizona so these are bigger injectors these are 650s remember my power goal for this car is only about uh, I want to say 450 to 500 horsepower and uh, I got a brand new air fuel meter which is from AEM on top we got a brand new 380 fuel pump 
So this is uh, quite a bit of a step up. I was going to do a, a, you know, a Wabro 255 or 250, I think, what it is. I forget which one it is, but um, I stepped it up to a 380 also from recommendations and the final part that you guys have here is of course the infamous SAFC um, but yeah so as some of you guys might say well dang it Luis you built your bottom end forged internals just so you could put a Lexus airflow meter in a SAFC what kind of crap is that yes I know I know I know but some things are easier said than done, right? So, after all, I always have a budget. And you gotta remember that $1,200 isn't something that everybody is just gonna pull out of their pockets whenever they want. So, I wanna, I wanna be able to have some fun. That's, that's my news for now. A lot more to come on these upgrades. And uh, I know a lot of you guys are not gonna like the fact that I'm running ASAFC and uh, Lexus Airflow Meter on the built bottom end. But uh, yeah, that's the move for now and future. When I save some change, I'll do ECU Master. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys liked the suspension video. Uh, that's it, peace out.